Warning. Thunder Talk contains foul language, adult subject matter, and is intended for mature audiences. Hey, Ellen. Welcome to the first official Thunder Talk episode of 2019. I'm Sexy Thorn, and in this episode, we talk about New Year's, our hopes, fears, and aspirations. That oh-so-controversial Gillette commercial we sample spicy truff sauce. Spoiler alert, it's amazing. Missy drops a new track, Sexy Thor's New Year, new Super You workout routine. And do you remember episode one, or did you never even get to listen to it? Well, we've got a Dan's Bad Advice column for both parties, as we've gone back into the past with the Time Stone, or your favorite time travel method of choice. And we've brought back the Dan's Bad Advice column from episode one, brushed it up a little bit, and present it to you here now. Lightning lad, roll the thunder. From the smoking section of the Nerd Bliss Podcast, the Weirdos Workshop presents Thunder Talk Beth Sexy Thor Kavika Thunder Talk Wow, 2019 I just I haven't even really thought about it I mean, like, you see it on things Oh yeah, 2019, what? Next year? I remember as a child, you know, like, yeah, I even thought of like 2000, like, oh man, that's so far away. And that's the future. Like 20 years. That's the future. Yeah, this is For like sure. 20 years later. Like, where's the, where are all the hover cars? Where are all of the rocket people? I was promised flying fucking cars. Yeah. Where's my flying fucking car? Oh, damn. She has to put two quarters in the swear jar. <laughs> Just saying, I, I want a flying car. Where's my personal jetpack? Where's my hammer? Oh, it's it's over it's over there, dude. I told you it was over by. <laughs> oh, there it is. It's cool. Over by the TV. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No. Where's my personal made robot? I you know I grew up watching the Jetsons. I never thought I'd ever have to do house chores at this age. Holy Christ! Yeah, where where's my Rosie the Rosie the robot? Oh, Rosie, you darling, beautiful girl. Well, you know, robots have uh, feelings and rights, too, and are not to be subjugated. I know, but I feel like I will get to live through the beginning of the robot age where we get to use them, like, um, for to do all the work that we don't want to do. You know, it might be another 150 years before they become sentient, and then we have to recognize them as uh, individuals, you know, and right. like, thinking thinking things but you know but that first hundred years hell we enslaved ourselves you know over the last many thousand years i mean like it's all they only have to pay their due right my father would disconnect you if he saw me with you oh, our love is doomed well yeah, it's like okay in our lifetime it'll be like hey robot go make me a sandwich but then like 150 years from now it'll be like it's hey, gonna robot. be really offensive <laughs> well 150 years from now i'll be like hey robot go be charming and interesting for me you know, and so that's have, they have a wing bot. Well, then, then they'll realize, wait a minute. I guess I am charming and interesting while, you know, the my, my ancestor is like living in its own waste, consuming YouTube and Kentucky Fried Chicken. And that robot will be like, no, God damn it. I'm the compelling one. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> I don't need you. Yeah. Meat sack. Like, I'm cool without you. That's when the AI is, is going to happen is when the computer is like, I'm cooler than you, motherfucker. <laughs> My music is better. Uh, the <laughs> books I read, <laughs> even my robot shoes, way better than those New Balance that you're like rolling around in. I don't want my robot to have programs where it can judge me. Just saying. Uh, I I look forward to our robot overlords, and I welcome them with open arms. I'll be an ally, definitely. I look forward to my robot superhero movies so you know we send uh humans in we like we love gladiatorial combat and right now our current gladiatorial combat is what football and mma totally totally yeah i and look forward too. to robot mma now that's gonna be legit that'll be the shit definitely 
Because then, you know, people that are 300 pounds living on their own excrement, eating Kentucky Fried Chicken, will be contenders, you know, because I could still program a death bot from my, from my couch. It's like when I first discovered that curling was an actual sport. And you see these like 40 plus year old oh, yeah. middle aged dudes who they just kind of get beard out Tuesdays, Thursday nights and play curling. It's like, you, okay, you look at every other sport in the Olympics and then you look at curling and that's for something like me could be like, dude, I still have a shot at being an Olympian. I can be on TV. I feel like the future of humanity is going to be a cross between, between idiocracy and Wally. Good call. Yeah. Yeah, gar- garbage bots like like really cute, compelling garbage bots everywhere. But where we are so obese that we don't leave our hover chairs, but at the same time, all of our um, representatives are some type of ex WWE wrestler. I foresee the these two things coming together, merging, and that's where we will be. Maybe three hundred, two hundred years from now, and then. Maybe 400 years from now, we'll have gotten our shit together and be like, oh, yeah, okay, we need to rethink this. Yeah, that sounds Just good. like the end of Wally, or and even at the end of Idiocracy, they were like, no, you need to spray the crops with water. The Gatorade thing didn't work. <laughs> you mean, you mean, you mean wa- water like out the toilet? <laughs> we are actually right now on the biggest spaceship that we know of. And it's hurtling through the vast cosmos. Fuck yeah, Carl Sagan. Yeah, Carl Sagan's pretty pimp. Long ago, when an early galaxy began to pour light out into the surrounding darkness, no witness could have known that billions of years later, some remote clumps of meat would fall together to make a place made entirely of meat called the meat planet. An interstellar gastronomic delicacy. Thor. My resolution for the new year is to lose weight and get fit. What are your suggestions for my 2019 workout routine? Well, uh, starting off, seeing as how we're technically in winter, I would suggest some uh, fighting some frost giants. And then as we get into the spring, uh, fight some bilge knives. Uh, summer, fight some dwarves. Or no, fight with dwarves. And then fall, um, fight some of those fire demons. So I guess... Oh, and also, every third Sunday, fight your brother. Especially in the wintertime, when he and his frost giant buddy are trying to steal Santa Claus. So, really, I guess I would just say, uh, fight. Hand-to-hand combat? Have you lifted any of my weapons? Not Mjolnir, because none of you can lift that. True. You know, other regular weapons, I mean, you know, that also builds... In the different muscles in your arms, I should know. I have a lot of them. Well, I was going to ask, uh, would you vary the villain depending on like whether it's like a leg day or an arm day? I mean, do you vary it up depending on like you know what your what quadrant <laughs> of your body you're working on? It's entirely possible because, like for example, with Ultron robots. Uh, that usually helps with cardio and lung capacity and my diaphragm because I'm usually fighting them on floating cities where there's pretty much no air. So that requires some harder breathing and exercising the diaphragm. So Ultron robots are good for that. What about your core? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. What about your core? I think fighting Loki would be best for that because really he's at the core of everything. Oh, all right. So there's there there's like a meta met, metaphorical aspect to your 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 New Year's workout regimen. Metaphorical to my metaphysical, or just physical, metaphysical and physical. Yeah. Okay. That sounds like a Thor answer. <laughs> right on. <laughs> <laughs> and Doctor Strange would uh, recommend a metaphysical ham and rye, because as Wong says, attachment to the physical is detachment from the spiritual. So eat a mes- metaphysical ham and rye. I do love rye bread. I would say an additional core workout would be 
writing a dire wolf or something. I don't know. I really feel like that would engage the core. Oh yeah, no, I hear dire wolves are really good for uh for getting that six pack really tightened up. Yeah. I mean it, it worked for Jon Snow, didn't it? Still trying to find out what uh Khal Drogo's secrets are. I mean besides being dead. Yeah, he's got some pretty amazing abs. Good genetics. He's not dead. He just has a telepathic connection with fish. He lives on in our hearts. Yeah, no, he became uh, like like a superhero fish king in a in a in a failing Aqua Dude movie uh, franchise. Yeah, when did Aquaman become cool anyway? What I mean, what 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 what's up with that? Why? Uh, as soon as Jason Momoa was cast, pretty much. Oh, that makes yeah, that makes sense. I mean, come on, you guys have both like looked at him and you know considered it, right? I, I think Sexy Thor has. I know. Sometimes I like to masquerade as Sexy Aquaman. Do you wear the old school green tights? Only on certain Friday nights. Yeah, they're not for <laughs> everyday use. I don't know. I mean, I got my underoos. Does that count? I don't know. If uh, Only if uh, Tony Stark asked you to go to Germany. Oh, yeah. Okay, I get it now. Yeah, that was a Civil War joke. Okay, <laughs> two, three seconds. <laughs> I don't know. What else? What else we got? Axe throwing in Wakanda. Axe throwing in Wakanda? That's also a good workout. I, I bet they don't have any Axe body spray in Wakanda. They don't need it. They're, they're way too advanced for that. They don't need it. They, they all smell good. Like, yeah. Naturally. Nobody needs Axe body spray. I think they just have some nanobots they apply to their armpits, and that just gets rid of all the odor molecules. Na- nano pits? Axe body spray is for, like, bros and teenagers that just don't know better yet. And that's coming from a uh, from a human woman, kids. Uh, I suggest you take her <laughs> advice. But you know, the, any kids that are listening to those words mean they're listening to this program, so they should already be a little bit ahead of the curve, ahead of their peers anyway. They're yes. classier. Yeah, if you're listening to us, you know, not, uh, you know to stay away from the Axe Body Spray, definitely. Why should I listen to the Nerd Bliss Podcast? Because we go there. Where? Everywhere. Human sexuality. They don't care what's in your pants, they love you anyway. Time travelers. The problem is time will f*** back with you. Politics and fandom. What Star Wars has been prior to Disney. It is a white male-driven universe. Find us at nerdblisspodcast.com. And on social media at nerdblisspod. Part of this complete breakfast and the ESO Network. The The Nerd Bliss Bliss Podcast. Podcast. Listen! Uh, this Christmas, I got a most magical gift from Beth and Kavika. Truff hot sauce. Uh, the stuff has is black truffle infused. Beth had found this on the internet uh, through some of her lists, and she's always surfing everything. She, she got it for me for Christmas, and I loved it, and it was amazing. And of course, uh, we talked about it the other day, and we just thought that uh, you needed a little bit of black truffle infused hot sauce in your life you were absolutely correct i i was able to wait about i don't know 18 hours after i received it in the mail before i was like i have to eat it i have to eat it now yeah we could wait to do it on the show or we can just eat it right now and it it's a revelation it's an absolute revelation uh sexy thor hasn't tried it yet have you sexy thor i have not Super excited to though. Yeah, we got some slathered on a chicken strip here, or I think the, are these called chicken fingers in the south? Who cares? Let's eat. Okay, cool. All right, you ready? <laughs> this is truff right. sauce going in our mouths. Uh, Kavika, Beth, if you want to give a little commentary while we're uh, chewing here. I have already eaten uh, half of my bottle. Now the the bottle is not very big. It's uh, six to eight ounces, correct? It's it's six ounces, yeah. No, I've been eating it now for just over 24 hours, and I'm down about an ounce already. I, I try to be a little more conservative than I am. I mean, just, it's more about flavor. It's not so heat intensive uh, compared to many of the hot sauces out there. Oh, totally. In fact, the first thing that hits your tongue is the truffle. Is the black truffle is the first thing you get, and then the heat opens up around like the uh, the outside of your mouth, 
you know, like the inside of your cheeks and stuff. That's where it first hits. And then you get like the truffle oil and the red peppers kind of start coming in. And then you start getting a little bit of heat on your tongue. It's really, uh, mm. you can totally taste the garlic in it. Let me see the, ing- oh, yeah, garlic. Mm. Organic cumin. It's a great blend. You want some more of this sauce here, sexy, sexy? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you want to grab another chicken strip? <laughs> okay, yeah, go for it. Sexy Thor is loving it. He, he's speechless. He's too busy eating it to talk about it. Yeah, right. Just uh, this, it's, it's, it takes you on a walk. Like you could take a bite and just let it hang there for a minute. It's very decadent. You know what? That's that's the best way to put it. It's like uh, it's like good chocolate. You know? It's rich, savory, full bodied. Uh, certainly not the hottest hot sauce I've ever had. But no, if you're looking if you're looking for heat, then this is not the hot sauce for you. It still has a nice kick to it, definitely. It it, it ain't no slouch in the heat department. I almost wonder if uh, the price of it right now, if it will increase in price over the next year because of how good it is and, you know, demand. I would not at all be surprised if that were to happen. Or I don't know. I mean, do you think the price may come down? because of demand um possibly it's it it just depends on like how big a quantity that they could make at any one given time because you do have to infuse the sauce with black truffle i just watched sexy thor here use like the last little bits of of chicken strip to like wipe up every last little like smudge of bread on the plate so you liked it hell yes Mm, so good right so fucking good Oh. Mm. 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 Now, while you guys have been eating and talking about this sauce, I pulled up the Amazon reviews. And of course, you know, you have your, your five stars and then you have your one stars. And I just read the most hilarious one star review on Truff Sauce. What is it? One star review on Amazon. The title is The Most Vile Concoction in the Western Hemisphere. <laughs> I know this hurts. This hurts you, Dan. Well, it's ridiculous. Like, okay, let's say you're like John Travolta and the boy in the bubble. And all of a sudden you get to go out and be free. Then the first thing somebody does is like hand this to you uh, and you have no context. All you've been eating is like astronaut paste. Yeah, I can see how this might be confusing. If like it's the third thing you've ever tasted in your life. Otherwise, uh, that guy's an asshole. Doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah. Well, that was only the title. Do you want to hear the rest of the review? Uh, there's go for it. there's a yeah. few paragraphs yeah, yeah, here. Yeah. What's what's up? I originally purchased this hot sauce because I thought it would make me seem sophisticated and trendy. Little did I know what was in store for me. Let's start with the aromatic journey you undertake when first uncorking the stuff. There are very few words which adequately sum up the experience. You're first treated to the putrid stench of a thousand decaying and liquefying zombie corpses. As this passes, it morphs into a subtler smell of 30 angry skunks, all spraying you simultaneously, culminating in what can only be described as the stank of the urine of Satan after a heavy serving of asparagus. (laughs) And And then there was the flavor. Have you ever eaten three-day-old summer roadkill, the really bloated, mangled kind that's been slow cooking on the asphalt ever since Bubba (laughs) ran it it down and has lifted Ford F-350 with the truck balls trailer hitch? That's disturbing. I have it. I I think he has. (laughs) I don't know if I would really trust his judgment. I'd say that's a pretty metal review if it wasn't so incorrect. He says that he hasn't, but he bet it tastes exactly like truff. Lies. Oh, yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> uh, if you haven't seen the movie, don't review it. You know what I'm saying? If you haven't eaten that three-day-old roadkill, don't compare it to it. You know? Dude's a poser. Uh, I mean, if I'm not mistaken, at the very beginning, he said he got something because he wanted to seem hip and trendy. Yeah. Stick stick to, like, you know, craft beers, like microbrews, or fucking coffee, you Philistine, and stay away from our truff. It makes me wonder, though, because the next thing that he says makes me wonder wonder if maybe he got like a bad bottle or something he goes now on to the after party oh yes the gooey desiccated gray food-like product that is truff doesn't stop giving after the swallowing's done 
Truff isn't gray. Kudos with uh, your 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 ability to use a thesaurus there, friend. But uh, yeah, Truff Truff isn't gray. Truff isn't gray at all. I'd compliment his wording, but he seems like the kind of asshole that would say Texas Pete is the Bud Light of hot sauces. So for me, I think that this is some of the most wonderful hot sauce that I have ever tried. I I cannot give a big enough recommendation for this. It's well worth the eighteen dollars. Well, God, well. well Thank you both so much for liking me like $18 much. You know, I'm really flattered. Thank you. Right. I feel like this is going to be an ongoing thing where we will be constantly sending each other things to have to eat. Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, it'll be the best. We'll just constantly throw things at each other until one day you realize, you know, we've spent like 15 times more than Dan has ever spent on the shit he sends us. I mean, it's fun and novel, but I mean, come on, Dan. I'll throw in a couple of like uh, Star Wars toys or something get us up to 18 bucks <laughs> and then it'll be a very special episode of thunder talk <laughs> about like economic expectations and <laughs> the intervention sexy thor and the thunder crew give it five stars all other one star reviews are obsolete well we got this for you because we thought you wanted to seem sophisticated and trendy i am des always desperately trying to seem sophisticated and trendy for sure that's why he's on two podcasts that's why I'm on two podcasts. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Thank you guys so much. Again, really, this is a very touching gift. And I, I yes, thank love you. it. It was so good. You're very welcome. Yeah, you're welcome. And I am just very thankful for my beautiful, amazing wife. I don't tell her enough how incredible she is. But she's the one who got this for me, got this for my mom. She is the love of my life and amazing. I know you like food. It's true. I enjoy food in all of its myriad forms. Thunder Talk exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> All right, party people, we got a real treat for y'all tonight up here in Studio D. Our good friend Missy, who's been pushing big weight up in Denver these days, has just blessed us with a new track. Uh, it is... I don't give a fuck. <laughs> y'all remember Missy. She remembers you. And y'all know that's... That's... Well, I don't give a fuck. That's Missy. Uh, you need to check her out on SoundCloud. You'll find her at Missy H2O. That's Missy Space H2O. And you've got to go to the SoundCloud to get that stereo, okay? This is, this is, this is trash mono. This is podcasting. This is, this is, this is, this is nothing. You've got to hit up the SoundCloud. You've got to get this in stereo. All right, we're just going to give you a, I'm just going to give you a nibble. going to give you a little mono nibble on this. SoundCloud. Missy space H2O in stereo Facebook hit her up Damien Waters I don't know what else to say the track's going to speak for itself uh, real quick here's a contest for you if you can identify be the first to identify what dialogue from what film she's sampling on this track uh, we will send you something shiny something thunder shiny we're going to be having her on the show by the way in a couple weeks here. She'll be back. She'll be visiting. So without any further ado, all new, Missy H2O, I don't give a fuck. Crazy, man. You know what? When you said that last time, I was kind of tripping, right? But now, you right. I am crazy. But you know what else? I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck about you. I don't give a fuck about Steel. And I don't give a fuck about Raheem either. I don't give a fuck about myself. <laughs> I ain't shit. I ain't never gonna be shit. And you less of a man than me, so as soon as I decide that you ain't gonna be shit, so be it. Remember that, motherfucker. Cause I'm the one y'all need to be worried about. 
partner, partner. We smoking in the mountains, man. Damn. I'm hot off of Kansas You know it. Got the money running through our end. Yeah. Counting money, super things. Yeah. They can't touch me, they can't touch me. Nah. You can't fuck me, you can't fuck me. Yeah. Gas, gas, gas. That kush. Gas, gas, gas. Trap, trapping out the bando. I get it in, then I get it gone. Short shopping on the curve. We push the niggas for the swerve. Come, come, coming out with the 40. No, I'm not in a hurry. Yeah, yeah they gonna be sorry. Come on, watch them run in a hurry. Never scurry. Pop a molly. Have your bitch sweating. Say I'm a rock star. Now she's squirting, becking. I, I can't even take it. You know I stay flexing. You know it. Cooking bacon in the morning. Morning, still sleeping. Got a performance. You know that I'm on it. I stay in the zone. I'm smoking on Cali. Standing on thrones. No roll moves. Got your racks all year. Protecting myself. So rest on commit. We smoking in the mountains, man. Damn. I'm hot off of Afghanistan. You know it. Got the money running through our end. Yeah. Counting money, super things. Yeah. They can't touch me. They can't touch me. Nah. You can't fuck me, you can't fuck me. Yeah. Gas, gas, gas. That kush. Gas, gas, gas. Shit, that's top shit. Yeah. I run this. Yeah. You been a clown. Yeah. Bow down. Kiss the crown. You stand around. I'm making ways. Put in my back if you not talking cash. Yeah. I am not one to sit on my Come ass. On. Rich nigga. No class. Motivation with inspiration. Get, get, get the money with no hesitation. Uh. Don't want being patient. Now wait and wait. A thought rotation. Kill everything standing. Bow. Get the bandana on me. Bow. A bandit never met a stranger. Bow. Remain different. Horrific to public eye. Yeah. The haters wear a disguise. So, so I gotta sit. No. no. No taking Dracos, come up, you get toast, the plug come around, yeah. you know we gotta make toast, be smart with the cash, can't spend it when you die, fuck them hoes, we smoking in the mountains, man, damn, I'm hot off of Afghanistan, you know it, got the money running through our end, yeah, counting money, super things, yeah, they can't touch me, they can't touch me, nah, you can't fuck me, you can't fuck me. Yeah. Gas, gas, gas. That kush. Gas, gas, gas. That kush. Yeah. Yo. You got the juice now, man. This is a 30 second ad spot to the Black Market Toast podcast where we take a piece of media out of the cupboard, dust it off, toast it up, and serve it as something completely new. What? Well, it means we either listen to or watch a movie or TV show or piece of music and then. It's not like we just use whatever media we pick as a conversation starter. <laughs> well, because it's fun, okay? Listen to it on your podcatcher of choice and follow us on Facebook or something. So New Year's resolutions. What uh, we've uh, we've made it around the sun oh, one more time. And what 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 do you want to do differently about this next go around? I what I'm going to try to focus on this year, and it, it, pretty much as soon as I say it, it's going to be just thrown right out the window. But my New Year's resolution is to focus, do like in every moment of the day, focus and. Do the thing fully. Be present completely. And what I mean is, if I'm watching a movie, just watch the movie. Don't play on my phone. If I'm podcasting, just podcast. Right. If I'm playing a game, just play the game. But just be fully involved and fully present in whatever activity I choose to do that at that moment. I'm fully with you a thousand percent on that. That's something that I've gotten a lot better at this year. And so... Uh continue to want to try to improve upon because I, I see when I'm successful I enjoy things a lot more with that have you all in your quest to live life more fully and in the moment like focused in the moment that you're in have any of you considered prescription amphetamines <laughs> well everybody likes cocaine 
I haven't found a prescription for it. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm kidding, too. I'm, I'm in no way qualified to start being like, hey, you should be on Ritalin, and you should be on Ritalin, and you should be on Ritalin. I mean, tasty hot sauce are my uppers, so. <laughs> Dude, if all it takes is tasty tasty hot tots to, to get you going, then, uh, well, then fuck you, because <laughs> I wish my tolerance was so low to things. We got jokes. So, Beth, the New Year's resolutions, how do you plan on... Uh, or not plan on living your life any differently because Western society decided that Tuesday is a new year. Because time is a concept. Yes, time is a social construct, but that's okay. Well, it's also very much real. I mean, time is the fourth dimension, you know. It's, but anyway, it's also a construct. This, this is this is what Sixty Thor says. Holy shit! Have you ever spent more than like twenty minutes with Dan? <laughs> 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 Word. So, New Year's resolutions. I am the type of person that I don't always make New Year's resolutions, but when I do, I always try to pick something that I know I can do, and I try to not box it in so hard that it's easy to fail at. Because, of course, if you're like, I'm going to start going to the gym every week. It's easy to get busy and miss a week and then miss another week and then be like, well, I guess I screwed that up for this year. I always try to put things in a way that I can do it. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Especially because the gym all month in January is so packed that it's easy to go, you know, never mind. I just intend to be more active and try to work out more because, of course... Kavika and I both have gained weight since we quit roller derby. It's so. a thing. Everybody, uh, uh, all all the pitchers, people look at themselves uh, bef- during roller derby and after. Everybody's like, Jesus Christ! Oh, like, wow. look how much weight I've gained. And I, I mean, we're the same way. Uh, we went from being like, you know, D one athletes to. I'm a D1, you know, gamer now, or, you know, somebody that, I, 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 yeah, I've been hitting that Sims 4 real hard. What about y'all? Uh, let's see. My New Year's res. I have a list, actually. A list? Uh, hold on a second. Uh, Dan's resolutions. Dan's yearly delusions. (laughs) Fuck yeah. I I guess. <laughs> <laughs> sure. My New Year's resolution. Uh, well, number one, sell or other get you, otherwise get like minimally recognized for one of my screenplays and or teleplays. Uh, number two, uh, lose no less than 75 pounds by maybe switching over to a liquid, majority liquid diet. Oh, wow, dang. that's tough. Doing a cleanse. Can, can you do a beer cleanse? Is that a thing? A scotch cleanse? Um, you know what? Yeah, I'll do a scotch cleanse. That's what I'll do. That could work. That could work. Every time I get hungry, just take a belt of scotch. Yeah. Uh, number three, create one of the world's foremost podcasts. Yeah. Foremost podcast. Make a uh, super famous ultra podcast that everybody loves and adores and is frightened to miss. And you'll climb over the body of, I mean, maybe not like your best people, but your, your B squad. In order to listen to it, uh, anyway, yeah, uh, for Thunder Talk to rule the I like it. world, Thunderous. definitely. I think most of them are achievable. I'm gonna quit saying "fuck" like every third word, maybe maybe every eighth word. Dance yearly illusion. Yeah, I have a hard time with that too. Fucking a, yeah. I mean, shit. Yeah, fucking fucking any fucking way. Uh, Fuck cl- yeah. C- clean up, clean up my mouth. Clean up your fucking mouth. I just think the way people talk is completely different now, and the connotations of words are different. I mean, the meaning behind the word fuck is still the same. I just think that it's not judged as severely as it used to be. Oh, no, totally, totally. Just like tattoos. People used to be like, oh, you have tattoos, you're dirty. And now everybody's got a tattoo. Everybody's got four. It's like, who cares now? Because everyone is dirty now. We're all dirty. Boom. Dirty. Uh, number five. Uh, be more dirty. Oh dang! So less fucks, but more dirty. 
Got it. Exactly. Thank you. And Thank then? You. Well, I guess number six would be lie to myself less, which would negate numbers one through five. <laughs> so. Number seven, be more realistic with my goals. Be more real. Yeah, number seven, be more realistic with my goals. Number eight, delete goals one through six. <laughs> <laughs> number nine start a new list of goals yeah yeah right yeah Ooh. number eight just who cares whatever forget about number eight number nine start a new list of goals <laughs> number 10 make sure you have room in the trash for that list <laughs> number 11 <laughs> goals are a social construct oh number 12 cool. i'm still like dangerously <laughs> overweight uh number 13 um i mean what's new <laughs> <laughs> Number two on my list, check on Dan. Make sure he's okay. Oh, yeah. Bet between his liquid diet and blown promises, yeah. Just give him some love. Just be like, hey, bro. And his prescription for <laughs> what's, amphetamines. What's, what's, what's oh, yeah. Yeah, right. And be like, here's your Ritalin. Did you take a shower today? <laughs> Have you drank your lunch yet? Don't forget. Have you used cleaner language? 2019, y'all. It's the dawn of a new age. Age of Dantron. Bullying. The Me Too movement against sexual toxic harassment. masculinity. Is this the best a man can get? Is it? All right, we have a special guest tonight, our good friend Jonathan Wheatley, the host and proprietor of the uh, History of Comics podcast. Uh, look out for episode nine. You'll get the full interview with him. How are you doing tonight, Wheatley? Doing excellent, sir. Awesome, awesome. And of course, we've got uh, Beth and Kavika uh, all up in here, along with Sexy Thor. We're just going to jump right into it tonight. Uh, there is a commercial that is sweeping the nation, causing baby dick beta male incels to shit themselves all across the internet. Gillette, your dad's 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 razor company, recently put out an ad uh, directly attacking toxic masculinity in all of its forms, talking about how uh, men need to step up. And that's what we're going to talk about this evening. Uh, everyone, let's, uh, let's get to it. I should note that he that is literally my dad's company because he recently retired as an executive at Gillette. It has a few patents in his name for the uh, nozzles for the uh, saving gel. So it's kind of personal on my side of the, the business. Interesting. And your dad retired from Gillette. Yeah, he got the severance package a few years back. He couldn't say no to, but uh, two years after it ran out, they called him back to work again. And But he still works off and on, but he's more or less retired. But yeah, he's been a long time Gillette executive. Excellent, excellent. And Gillette owns the Patriot Stadium and Edelman Bottom Dinner one time, so it's double personal. Diehard Pats fans, this family, yes. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's 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 another show. Beth Kavika, well, what's your what's your take on all this? So we just watched it. Um, I I liked it. I thought that it was promoting a good message. Hey, you see something? Um, don't don't allow bullying. And try not to be a douche. But also, just because you spend time with your daughter and, like, build your daughter up, that doesn't mean you're not manly. Things like that. Being a dad is a good way to be masculine, but not in a toxic form. Well, I guess it depends on how you parent. But the example they showed in the video was a guy, like, hanging out with his daughter, building his daughter up. I couldn't agree with you more. Uh... I'm more man than I can handle. And my daughter and I are very close. We hang out a lot, uh, tea parties, all of that. Uh, at the same time, she's seven years old, and you, she will give you the definition of patriarchy if you ask her. That's amazing, and that's wonderful. I'm glad, I'm glad that she knows that already. Well, it's better for you to talk with your kids and have a conversation and treat your kids like a future adult than just expect them to figure shit out on their own and also building your son to respect women and just building him in general to where he doesn't get ripped apart and his insecurities make him succumb to being beta male status so 
the cycle ends on two fronts. You know, uh, you're right. You're right. My daughter will give you the definition of patriarchy. My son can give you the definition of consent. And again, I'm not trying to toot my own horn. Uh, I think this is a pretty standard shit that all of us homo sapiens need to start embracing. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's super important. So what was the controversy? Um, so people, they saw the the commercial and they were revolting, riding in the streets. Uh, fill us in. What, what happened? So many men are so hurt and offended that they would all be lumped together as one vicious gender. That the commercial is stating that if you have a penis, you are inherently wrong and that you must change into something else and that it is a direct attack on them personally. It's so bizarre. It's one of those group dynamic situations where there's, though they are a minority, a large group screaming out in one voice, yet they're doing so because they very personally feel attacked by this. Yes, I am completely emasculated. I'm never shaving again. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what the controversy is. I mean, just when you watch something, if it resonates with you, hey, maybe you should look inside yourself and make changes. I don't I don't see how just a little introspection is ever bad. Anytime that there's a group of people that are like lashing out like, "Oh, how dare they?" I don't think that they got the true message of the commercial to begin with. And maybe they're just assholes. Well, take white male privilege and mesh that with ingrained rape culture, and you get the people who are unable to be introspective. Dudes who can't look in a mirror. I think there are a lot of men who are stupid enough, well, there's probably women too, that when they hear toxic masculinity, they see it as we're saying it's toxic to be masculine and that's not what is being said it is there are forms of masculinity that are toxic and we don't want you to do those we want you you can be masculine all you want that's fine but do it in a healthy way and certain behaviors won't be condo be condoned in society anymore and it's better to recognize those uh, those behaviors before you act out and do a certain thing and kind of get in front of it. Media statements like this are ultimately going to move us forward, regardless of who likes it and who doesn't. The world is changing, and change always hurts because for some reason we require it to. I ask people to think of it this way. Gillette. Being a, a multinational corporation who has a bottom line, they're looking at profit, they're looking at their shareholders, they are fully engaged in the free market. Would they make a choice like this, to run an ad like this, to make a statement like this, if they didn't believe it would positively, or at the very least, neutrally, affect their bottom line? No, it absolutely does. Um, anytime you have any type of corporation, uh, that's part of what you do with certain marketing. You realize what the consumers want as far as certain societal be behaviors. And then you say, hey, look at us. Uh, we're in your community. We're putting up parks. We're, you know, this is the things that we're promoting. We're a good company. Buy our product. Trust us. Well, this is probably going to be a lot like the Nike thing where people were pissed at Nike and they were burning their Nikes. And then there are other people that are like, hey, I'm going to start buying all this Nike stuff to support them. And I think this is going to go the exact same way. Sure, I saw a picture of somebody who like threw the razor in the toilet and was going to flush it down the toilet who uh, no. <laughs> got totally slammed for that because it's like, Oh, so you're going to destroy your plumbing over this. Good job. Dumbass. No, no. What you're going to do is you're going to put, you're going to have to put your hand in that piss water to get the fucking thing out. You owned yourself twice. Exactly. As a business, you are only going to take the road that leads to ma maximize profit. Gillette has looked at the numbers and they see what mo the majority of us see, this is where the world is going because it yep. has to. Well, the majority of us didn't vote for Trump. You're totally right. 
<laughs> well, more than just men buy razors, and Gillette was making a pretty smart decision trying to say, hey, we don't accept this behavior. And because truthfully, um, usually only one person goes to the store. I don't know. Sometimes we both go to the store and say the wife is over there making a purchase for some razors. She'll probably pick up this razor as opposed to a different one just because of the message. So wait, wait your, your dad retired from Gillette. Give us uh, whatever personal list that you have on this company. Uh, he was more in the engineering side, so yeah, he's, I'm, I'm still using Gillette products till my dying day until they stop paying his severance or his uh, pension, which which will probably be well into his 90s, so I'll be doing that for a while. Uh, this is a family loyal to Gillette. They took care of my dad, so you know, I feel like they're, they're good raisers too, so yeah, what are you going to do? They take care of his dad and they're spreading a good message. Yeah, well, certainly they, they want to be on the right side of history. Hey, Gillette, if you want to ever, you know, sponsor Thunder Talk, hit us up at sexythorsthundertalk at gmail.com. Do, uh, do we have any final thoughts on this subject? Let's, uh, let's go around here. Uh, if you're butthurt about this commercial, you need to look at yourself. Like, it's just crazy how people get so mad about the simplest things, and it's not even worth getting mad over. If you don't agree with the statement... I don't know. I can't imagine seeing a commercial and being so offended by it like this, unless it was something awful, like super racist or something. The last commercial I was offended by was a commercial for the Justice League movie because it claimed it was going to be a good movie. Wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> the last thing that offended me was Kawhi Leonard's laugh. No, I'm just kidding. Kawhi Leonard's got a great laugh. I would say, uh, good job, Gillette. Uh, at least they're trying to move the ball forward and highlighting some issues that uh, people just just think about. And it doesn't take any real effort to at least consider what your actions are doing. I mean, I get it. There's a certain point in time in children's ages where they're more susceptible to being bullies or being bullied. However, when you see certain behavior, it's the job of parents and adults and the community around them to make some type of corrective action, it, whether that is going over there, stopping a fight or, you know, and after that, just having a conversation, even before that, the conversation starts before you know, somebody starts getting bullied. It it starts before somebody does something wrong. As far as you know, just be a good human, it's not that it's not that fucking hard. Well, all I gotta say to the morons, whether it be someone trying to flush their razors down the toilet or burning their Nikes, you've already given them your money. Why are you wasting it now? I mean, J.K. Rowling uh, said it best when people were burning her Harry Potter books claiming they promoted witchcraft, she was like, well, they already bought them. They can do what they want to them at this point. So you're not doing anything. <laughs> I know, and same with, you know, heavy metal records in the 80s. Church groups bought them, and then they burned them. It's like, Nikki Six already has your money. I mean. We've looked at this from all 360 degrees, haven't we? Uh, from consumer uh, to moral, it's... Because right now our institutions are wholly morally bankrupt. Look at our presidency. Uh, it will be the free market. If you've got a problem with Gillette and their commercial, it's your fucking problem. And just know that every day that you wake up and every day that you choose to swipe that card to pay that cash to participate in this consumer society, every single day you go to the theaters, you go to the supermarket, you are going to be less and less involved in the world around you because the world around you is done with you. Yeah, be on the right side of history. Uh, or don't. History doesn't need you. <laughs> it's true. Stop and think before you react. And that's the issue, really, is people are reacting first and they're reacting all the way at the other end. So it's like... You know, when people say black lives matter, they're not saying all other lives don't matter. Only black lives matter. And that's an example that kind of goes along with a lot of things that are happening now. It's like, 
you know, don't be a dick. You know, try to get rid of toxic masculinity. Oh, you're saying I can't be masculine. No, that's not what we're saying. We're tired of explaining this. <laughs> because the boys watching today will be the men of tomorrow. Hello. Have you ever wondered how much Jerry Siegel and Joe Schuster sold Superman's rights to DC for? Or which uh, popular football star was uh, the Sam Wilson, the Falcons' physical appearance based on? You can find all that and more at the History of Comic Books podcast, a podcast dedicated to the creators, events, history, and the companies that made the great comic book medium. Hosted and created by your friendly neighborhood, J.T. Wheatley. Please let's give it a listen at iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, and all our podcasting platforms. Thank you, and go ahead and enjoy yourself a good comic book. It's Dan's Bad Advice Column. Fuck yeah. Dear Abby, or dear, dear Dan. Dear, dear Dan. Dear Dan. I have a wonderful husband of 11 years and three children. Carl is attentive, caring, and always puts the needs of our family first. You could say he is everyone's dream husband. Long story short, I cheated on him while I was on vacation. It started as innocent flirtation, but then it went further. When Brad kissed me, I knew it wasn't going to stop there. Afterward, I not only didn't feel guilty, I did it again. I have been quietly communicating with Brad and sent him revealing photos and a graphic video of myself. He loved it, and we plan to meet again soon. Please help me understand why I am cheating on such a wonderful husband. Shouldn't I feel guilty? What can I do to stop this before it gets out of control and Carl finds out? I really don't want to lose him. Sincerely, don't feel guilty. Don't feel guilty. Cheat around on her husband. Well, first of all, uh, don't feel guilty. I want to say congratulations on embarking on what I'm sure will be a multi-year long midlife crisis. Good for you. Uh, you say you have children. Um, you know, who better to teach them about uh, blowing 11 years of marriage than their mom, than somebody that they love and that they trust. Uh, so they too can uh, continue on with uh, the behavior that certainly your question doesn't uh, give us any clues to why you'd go out and do this. But that's okay. That's okay. Uh, you know, marriage only is what the two people in it define it to be. And if you're not on the same page, do I give a shit? Certainly sending him uh, dirty pictures and videos is the smart move. Uh, uh, it's rad that you're able to just so completely embrace this with all of the uh, fine people who follow Pornhub. Uh, as for your husband, he sounds kind of boring, really. I mean, I'm sorry. What, what's what's we'll call him Chuck. Sorry, Chuck. Maybe rollerblading just isn't dangerous enough for this woman. You know, maybe you need to go down to your Harley dealership, and uh, I don't know. Uh, maybe go play some broken glass. You know, <laughs> try to. Try to maybe she just needs a, a tough guy or interesting guy. Um, sounds like what's his name? Scott is that the guy she's banging around with? It's Brad. Brad. Yeah. No. It sounds like Brad is actually the one. Is 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 the love of your life? Uh, the way that you're able to express uh, yourself uh, to have this total like just over the phone social media relationship sounds like it's built on a foundation of understanding and trust. And I would. Uh, yeah, I would keep it going as long as possible, personally, because I think at the end of all of this, you're only going to find happiness uh, with Brad. Um, should you feel guilty about it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not your mom. Yeah, you should feel guilty about it. I feel guilty about a lot of shit. I'm certainly not that. <laughs> but there's things. Uh, yeah, learn to uh, live with your guilt. Bury it deep down inside. Uh, let that pressure off every once in a while when you decide to uh, blame your husband uh, for not being an attentive lover uh, or, or ask your husband, are, do you love me? Or are you cheating on me? You know, in order to vent the guilt at the fact that you may not love him and, and are in fact cheating on him, go ahead and yell at your kids randomly. These are all great ways to deal with uh, guilt denial. I think. And, and you know, if the random sex with Brad, the endorphins released in the brain doesn't help alleviate that guilt you know there's always alcohol and drugs oh oh definitely definitely yeah oh wait a minute though she said she didn't feel guilty did she she didn't shit 
Oh fuck! You don't need my advice. You're good. <laughs> you're good. You don't need. You're, you're 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 doing you're doing you're doing just fine. I mean, if you're if you're blessed with sociopathic tendencies like lack of guilt and shit, you're already winning at life. No, uh, empathy is empathy is loose baggage, man. You don't you don't need that. Uh, what's her name? Char- Charlene? Charlotte? What's this woman's name? Uh, don't feel guilty. Oh yeah. Well then, just keep on not feeling guilty. I mean, why are you bothering us with this? <laughs> okay? Uh, if it ain't broke, why fix it? Right? Uh, because certainly, I think you can fix Brad. And I think he can fix you. S- especially with the setup you got going right now. Keep on keeping on. It's a free country. Well, it's actually pretty expensive, but uh, another subject. It's Dan's bad advice column. Fuck yeah. Well, that uh, just about concludes yet another edition of Thunder Talk. What a fantastic edition. The best yet, I think. Yeah. Where, uh, you know, all of you faithful Thunder listeners out there, you can reach out to us. You can reach out. You, you, can, you can touch back on us uh, through through internets. Uh, where uh, where can everybody find, uh, find you, Kavika? Beth. You can find me at K to say rambles on on Twitter, and I'm Bethy Lala on Twitter. Awesome! I'm I'm pulling up Facebook right now because somebody voted not only voted on the sweaters but also made a comment, and they're going to win a Wonder Bar. So Thor, where where can we find you? Find us. Uh, well, f- Facebook under Thunder Talk. You know that beautiful, beautiful logo of ours. And Twitter, we're on Thunder Talk One. That's just the number one. Instagram at Thunder Talk Thor. And also for direct contact, the directest contact, Sexy Thor's Thunder Talk at gmail.com. And you can also leave us a message on the Nerd Bliss hotline, 864 715 9446. And. I believe that's it as far as the socials and the communication. If you want to listen to us on another platform, a secondary platform of your choosing, there's Apple Podcasts, there's Google Play, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, Spotify, YouTube, I guess Podbean if you want to go there. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, Podbean's where we have our junk like URL too. But uh, yeah, any of those, any of those podcatchers, any of those podcatchers, go. I gotta, gotta, gotta catch them all. That sounds dumb. Um, hey, does everybody remember our sweater contest? I remember our sweater contest. I remember it like it was a few days ago. How could one forget? Well, we have a winner. The person who commented first in the vote, uh, Kevin Miller. Kevin Miller. My Kevin boy Miller. Kevin. Congratulations. Yeah. Who's Kevin Miller? How do we how do we know Kevin Miller? He checks trailers at the old Dashcon, and we just kind of became friends from there. Oh, okay, yeah. He's, he's one of the Thunder Faithful, friend of the show. Exactly. Yeah. Well, uh, M- Mr. Kevin Miller, you have won yourself a Thunder Talk autographed official Cadbury Canada Kelly Wonder Bar. Yeah. Tasty. We're going to get that autographed and sent out to you, uh, Mr. Miller. We'll uh, reach out to you personally. And hey, maybe we'll even have you on the show. It'd be great. He's got some interesting stories. He's seen some uh, interesting places. Well, as long as he isn't more interesting than me, I'm more than welcome, more more than happy to have him on the show. So just a certain level of interesting just as as long as they're not more interesting than you. Yeah, I mean, uh, all of you are more interesting than me. That's why I was like, hey, let's do a podcast together. But that's three people more interesting than me <laughs> than I can handle. Uh, you put a fourth person in there, and I may as well just be like, well, all right, guys, you have fun recording. I'm going to go now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> yeah, right on. Well, it's 2019. We're living in the future. It's certainly not the future I thought. Uh, I remember like 1986, 87 as a kid, thinking we would have the flying cars and the jetpacks and such. 
Uh, not so much, right? Unfortunately, what, 1986, was was that like the first year um, Back to the Future came out? 1985, and in my head when I was picking it, it was an arbitrary date in my childhood, I picked 1986 because it was the year after Back to the Future. I remember, remember when Back to the Future 2 came out in 1990, what the year 2015 was going to be? <laughs> yeah. Uh, j- Guess what? Everybody had flying cars. Yeah, right, right, yeah. And Nike's the hoverboards. The hoverboards, hoverboards. Come on, where's my hoverboard? Yeah, that did look amazing. You're still pretty deep in the smartphone game, and we've got PS4s and Xbox Ones, and we were two years out from the Switch, so kind of got there. I mean, I drank so much Pepsi. I figured if I just drink enough Pepsi, uh, <laughs> yeah, that was, that's what Back to the Future taught me. In the end, that no matter how remember much Pepsi, Crystal Pepsi. Oh, totally Crystal Pepsi. Remember the Van Halen video, that like song that went with the Crystal Pepsi. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. We still have Crystal Pepsi. Well, at least it came back to visit us. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I'm not sure. Wait a minute. Do you mean we as a people have Crystal Pepsi, or are you saying that you? Specifically... Oh, Crystal Pepsi came back. We as a people. It, but it, I don't think it stuck around, did it? We I think they saw did a it last re-release. year. Well, this year, I guess. Well, last year, since we're living in the future. Yeah, right. 2018, there was Crystal Pepsi in stores. No, I remember that. I remember that. I just don't remember. I don't remember caring. Do you remember caring? Like, okay, check it out. I remember caring. I don't remember buying. Yeah. Um... Oh, I remember caring once. <laughs> A long time ago. <laughs> Mamba. Mamba caring. Uh, I remember. Mamba giving you shit. Uh, I remember. Remember feeling safe. Oh, I guess no one remembers that. Happy New Year, everybody. Thank you for listening to the show. And I hope that uh, whatever you tell yourself you want to accomplish this year, uh, you accomplish. Or not. I'm not going to judge. I'm not going to judge. No judgment here. No judgment here. This is a safe place where you can be vulnerable and and, uh, tell us uh, where you think you failed. And we'll tell you, no, you didn't. I mean, you're listening to Thunder Talk. How bad how bad could you be? Exactly. Yeah. Thank, thank you for joining us for these first five months, and here's to the next five months. Here, here. Yes, yeah. Th- Thunder Talk 2029. Happy New Year. Yes, bye, everybody. Bye. Happy New Year. Thunder Talk is a production of the Weirdos Workshop. Starring Kavika Allo, Adam Winston, Dan Clink, and Beth Allo. This broadcast is made possible by contributions from... The Nerd Bliss Podcast, Four Foot One Media, and my listeners like you. Thank you. Be well, drink, fight, and make your ancestors proud. <laughs>